hey everybody, I want to welcome you to this special edition of Real Life Talk, our podcasting outreach that we uh, we host, but we don't host enough with all that's going on in the world. Man, we need to get back at this more and more. But um, I have to tell you that uh, we have today a program that in many ways is very raw, and I have to tell you how and why. Uh, this podcast today came about because not too long ago, after a church service, I met uh, Grace Cho in the foyer, and I had um, asked her a few questions, and she had made a few statements about her uh, love for God's Word, how that's not always been the case, and her walk with Jesus, and sometimes not, and the very experience of her life. And when I heard in just a capsulated form, what she was sharing with me, I immediately uh, told her, would you be willing to go on a podcast? And so she said, yes. And so we're here today and nothing is scripted. This is as raw as raw can be. And so you're going to be joining me in learning about how uh, this young woman with her experience has come to this point and place in time. And the reason why I think this is important is because what I know, a little bit of what I know about Grace's life is a snapshot of today's young people. And it's quite remarkable. So Grace, I want to welcome you, Thank you. to Real Life Talk. And I don't want you to be nervous at all in any way. <laughs> I want you to forget about the people that are around us. Okay. Because I was so touched by just the few words that you shared with me. Um, it blew me away. And I know this almost sounds kind of cold and I don't mean it to be, but when I heard you talk and share what you did in that moment, mm -hmm. I just thought this is the poster child of hope, right? This is the face that I would want to see on the milk carton <laughs> to announce that there is an alternative way of thinking mm -hmm. for the younger generation. Mm -hmm. So um, take us uh, to your life. Tell us your story from the beginning what have you experienced? And then we'll talk more about where you're at today. Okay. Um, so 10 years ago, um, I turned to the Lord and I accepted Jesus Christ, but that was my senior year of college. Um, and at that point I was already liberal leaning. Um, and then for the last 10 years that I've been out of college, I became completely indoctrinated by the left wing um, way of thinking by from like the media and social media progressively. Mm -hmm. um, and so that went on for a few years um, where I called myself a Christian, except that I had it all wrong. So it was this is my way, like this is my truth. And I'm going to insert God into the equation the way that it fits for me and my right. truth, you know, like completely wrong. Um, so, <laughs> so that goes on for several years. Um, I'm living in San Francisco at that point. And a year and a half ago, I moved down from San Francisco to Chino Hills. Uh, shortly thereafter, I find this church and start attending. And there were several times in the course of last year where I walked out of here. Like in my <laughs> mind, I thought I was storming out, but I was trying to keep a call. So you were one of the many there. who get up and walk out when, when I start speaking sometimes. No, no, I never out. walked out oh, okay. in the middle. I always <laughs> stayed until the end. <laughs> okay, very good. But I walked out being like, how can they talk about politics like that in, in church? How yeah. can the pastor say that? I'm never coming back. But then it's not even several weeks in between, like the next Sunday, I would find myself just driving back. And, wow. and I couldn't understand it. I was just like, what's going on? And, and now I know it was totally the Holy Spirit. Um, and so I do wanna say thank you for teaching God's word and his truth the way that you do. Um, but every single week, the Holy Spirit just kept bringing me back. And I hadn't missed a single Sunday since um, I started attending. Um, the real turning point was late June. So, um, sorry, I'm a little shaky because I've never done anything No, this like is this great. This, you're doing great. So, um, you know, we had all, um, we had the Black Lives Matter protests happening yeah. and, 
it was everything felt so dark and there was just so much chaos and confusion and um you know like i would start seeing on social media like just people attacking each other like you oh, know yeah. if you didn't say something you were attacked and then when you did say something right. you were attacked for saying it wrong and so everyone's like you know full of emotion and we're trying to right. process what's going on and um i started like i really really wanted to do something and so i was like looking to other people for inspiration just like was not getting it something right. seemed like i just couldn't get things right so god placed this in my heart where like i had this desire to look to him i you know and i decided like god is the one and only truth like i need to turn to him and you know find the truth coming from him so i decided for um like a couple weeks however long it would take um that i would cut myself off from all social media and I put down all the books that people were saying like, oh, you should read to fight racism. Like all the books, like Netflix, social media, everything, I cut it off. And then instead I decided to turn my focus to God. And um, like, so I turned to prayer and worship and his word. And the Bible says in Luke 11 to um, ask and, mm -hmm. and you'll receive and seek and you'll find and knock and the door will be open to you in regards to the Holy Spirit. So I just kept praying um, for God to enlighten me with his Holy Spirit and to, you know, to show me like the way, yeah. which is his way. And oh my gosh, within like a month's time, there was a complete 180 in my life. And so as of that whole process started on June 23rd, um, I've been sort of like journaling this process. That's awesome. And so as of June 23rd, I said um, that I was ashamed of being an American. Um, I had bought into all the deception from the media about BLM, the organization. Mm -hmm. And then um, as of that point, even though my heart had already started to turn, I was still pro-abortion. Mm -hmm. And in a month's time, all of that changed. Um, and wow. then not just that, but God completely took away all the anxiety in my life. And it's just like not, it's not just regular anxiety that I just described moments ago. This was like major, like I would even say debilitating anxiety mm. that I had suffered from for 10 years. And it's something that I came to just accept about myself. Wow. It, you know, like once, this anxious thought came in that was it like forget about me getting any work done for the rest of the day or feeling like i could be out in a social setting and for anyone out there who struggles with anxiety and anxiety anxiety attacks they'll know just like how burdened you are with like not just the anxiety attack episodes but always wondering like when is the next one going to mm. come up you know and yeah. God completely took it away without like any medication. Since I started this process, I haven't had any anxiety attacks. And in its place, God has filled me with like this peace and this comfort and this joy that I have never felt before. Um, and I'm not saying that I don't get anxious thoughts. I, I, I still do. But then right when they do, I turn my attention immediately to the Lord and to praise and worship. And within like, Minutes, minutes it all falls away um and if i may just add one more thing of course so um so i mentioned that i was previously like pro abortion and um over the course of the first i think two weeks or so um my heart started to slowly change but there was this one particular day where god put a deep 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 convic conviction in my heart that made me realize just how wrong i was and um, I'll tell you that I just broke down crying. It was, I had like tears and snot just like pouring <laughs> down my face. I, you know, my body was just a, sort of like wow. rocking back and forth, just like, just so grieved by how wrong I was. Um, oh gosh. <laughs> um, no, that's awesome. And, um, what happened next was that I had this health issue 
And interestingly enough, it was a women's health issue. Um, I've had it for eight years and um, I stopped seeing any um, doctor about it because after I sought out the opinions of four different doctors and they all told me they couldn't do anything, mm-hmm. I was just like, okay, like I guess that's it. Um, and he completely heal- healed me Did of he? that. Yes. A hundred percent. So God is real. He is still working miracles. Yes. He's so good and faithful and loving and merciful. Just like just thinking back on how I had it so so wrong for ten years, mm. but he like he never gave up on me. He never stopped loving me. He no. waited and waited and then finally once I decided to turn to him, he like completely welcomed me with, with yeah. open arms. That's him. Yeah, that's, exactly. That's so I want to ask you this question. Let's go back. Let's go back to your upbringing, your childhood, mm-hmm. the location of that, the the atmosphere of your home. The uh, reason why I'm asking is because uh, good, bad, or ugly, mm-hmm. the home that we are brought up in has mm-hmm. a profound influence upon us developing a worldview. Mm-hmm. That is how we see the world through the lens of our process. So mm-hmm. tell us a little bit about that, uh, your upbringing. Uh, Sure. So my dad um, was a minister, actually. So we grew up in the church um, and it was just something that myself and my sister and my brother, we accepted. Um, There was like no questions asked. Like it was a given that we had to, you know, follow God and live our lives in the church. Just no matter what, this is what we do. Yeah, it was just like passed down to us. Um, and then when I went off to college, I decided um, that, you know, I wanted to try living life on my own. And where was that? that? So you're at what age and you are where at this time? Um, so this was going into um, freshman year at Harvard. And so I was 18 yeah. then. Yeah. So and you, were you living, did you move from San Francisco area to Boston or? No, we were living in New York at that time. So oh, we, you were living. Okay, mm-hmm, we grew living up in New York. In New York. Okay. Yes. And so going into college, I made it this conscious decision that you know I wanted to try living life on my own, sure. and um, this it's, this is the first time I wasn't like living under my parents' room, yeah. uh, my parents' roof, where sure. um, so you God, had all this freedom. All yeah, of a sudden. yeah. Um, and it's so funny because you would think that me hanging on to like my freedom would make me feel free. Um, but I had never felt more like burdened in my Mm. life. Um, and just where I am today, having surrendered everything to God, I I have never felt more free in my life, but going back to, um, my, I guess my upbringing, um, was, yeah, just, so you, you have, can I, uh, let me be kind of blunt. It may not be this, this way exactly, but so you're in a Christian home mm-hmm. and it is embedded in you that this is what we believe. This is how it is. And then you are released um, into what people would say is the real world, mm-hmm. which I have debates about if that's the real world. Mm-hmm. But you go to Harvard. Mm-hmm. And um, I would imagine, as it is today, Harvard, extremely liberal, mm-hmm. very progressive. Mm-hmm. And so you are baptized in this entirely different worldview. And um, sad to say, much of that worldview on the University College campus is a worldview with a grudge. It's got a chip on its shoulder. It's kind of angry. It's it's bitter. Mm-hmm. Uh, it focuses on what's really wrong more than the amazing opportunities that are in front of you. Mm-hmm. Did you at all find out at any time whatsoever regarding Harvard, uh, how Harvard was established, why it was established? Did you know who created Harvard? Did they ever indoctrinate you in any of that? truth at all regarding the very origins of your school not really yeah Yeah. um and it's funny because i was thinking about this a lot the last few days where during high school um my teachers placed a lot of emphasis on looking out for media bias and um i had this one history teacher in particular and she like the the papers where I thought I had a very clear argument mm. um, that I was like proud of. I'm like, you know what? Like I wrote this like very, very well. Like, you know, like everything's very like 
clearly laid out. And those were interestingly the papers I got the lowest marks in. And it was the papers where I felt like I kind of didn't really have a point, but I kept going round round about because I was like, well, like, but there's this perspective, mm-hmm. and on the other side there's this, but then this is how this side is fighting back. And so, the papers where like there didn't seem to be a focus, where I thought like, okay, I just like wrote that terribly, but I had this like mindset of like questioning everything. Those were like the papers that my teachers would like give me the highest marks in. Wow. And. And so then I'm like thinking back to my education at Harvard and this could just be me. This might, I'm not speaking for like everyone, sure. but um, like the, any idea of media bias, I kind of just felt like I think, or fighting media bias like fell away from me. Mm-hmm. Um, Wow. Yeah, I just like kind of got out of the habit of doing that, and I realized that's so. When that you're happened. saying, if I have, if I understand you right, you're saying that you got the you got the understanding that they really wanted you to fall in line with the um, mob thinking versus you even being open enough with critical thinking to present other views around a particular topic, whatever it was. You were, in other words, you were being more fair regarding. The issue are issues that you were not sure about. You introduced various options, right? And they didn't like that. Um, yeah, there were a couple of times where I was, I had to like gather evidence and the things that kind of <laughs> didn't fit my paper, I was just like, well, that's inconvenient. I'm just gonna take it out. Yeah. And that was never an issue. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that just might have been my experience in the courses that I stumbled upon. But if yeah. that's happened in a couple courses that I can remember, yeah. then. Yeah. Um, wow. OK, so now at this time you're in Boston and mm-hmm. bring us now forward from there. What transpired in your life? So I ended up moving to San Francisco and um, I was really really trying to find the lord while i was there um wow okay hang on (laughs) hang on so you're brought up with the biblical worldview you go to harvard and you have all of this different dynamic but you go to san francisco to find the lord or you didn't have that plan you you went to frisco and you found out that jesus was not only in new york it turns out that he's in boston and san francisco yeah. he's working on your heart mm-hmm. because you had a past where the bible was put in you from the beginning mm-hmm. this is so critical for where we're going yeah. oh look i'm sorry let me backtrack just a little bit so coming out of boston i guess um i so after four years um of attending harvard i came to this point where um I was very, very depressed. And I, it was just this very one clear moment where I was on my bedroom floor and like that was the lowest of my lows. Uh. And I just couldn't find any like willpower to, to pick myself up. Mm. And things felt hopeless. And all of a sudden I felt this voice, but it's, it's it wasn't a voice in my head. It was sort of like in my heart. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, it was God saying, like, I've already forgiven you. Why can't you forgive yourself? Mm-hmm. And that's the moment I mentioned way in the beginning when I said that I turned to Jesus Christ. Wow. So it was then that, uh, and, and immediately I kind of felt like there was this very, like, warm, comforting hug, um, like, spiritually. And that's so right. it picked me up. Um, and I decided to start afresh and that at that time my closest friends were in San Francisco so um, that's when I made the move across the country to get a new fresh start Um, and it was a very godless city (laughs) (laughs) well I just drove through there a couple days ago and it's still the same but Mm -hmm. wow and um, but I still wanted to fight for the Lord and I I just like knew he was real in my life. And so I just, I found this church and um, I was the only one out of all my friends going to church who believed in God. And um, I've kind of, I felt, I fell silent about my faith because every time I opened my mouth about it, um, I would get backlash. Sure. And so, 
Um, I was there for four years trying to like fight to have a relationship with the Lord, but it was yeah. not being in the environment that was conducive to it that was right. keeping me from it. So, um, yeah, without, you know, a great career opportunity or anything down here, I, yeah, I moved that, down here. How did that happen? I mean, um, <laughs> how did that happen? I mean, you just don't spin the globe and stick your yeah. finger at Chino Hills. I mean, so my parents had moved down here, okay. and so I decided I just wanted to break away from San Francisco. And my parents were here, and it just seemed logical. Like, let me just, you know, like go back home and make up for lost time with my parents that I like didn't really have growing up. Yeah. Um, and so I decided to move down here. Just took like a job that um, I didn't even care for at all. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> but God had a purpose in that. Oh yeah. And he led me to to this church and my life has changed. Wow. Your life has been set apart by God and you 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 didn't know that early on, but God has always known that because mm -hmm. his truth never changes. So his hand's been upon you. And the fact that Isaiah 55, 11 tells us that his word that goes forth does not return void. So all this time, whatever you were doing, wherever you went, numerous times you've already said that you had this thought about God or you felt really convicted or you felt his hug. These things are proof, tangibles, of being a child of God. Mm -hmm. In your Christian experience, in your Christian journey, in your walk with God, what's the what for you is the, one of the most or the most difficult thing to to be grappling with? Is there something that you are really hanging on to or really trying to find out about um, regarding God? I mean, like maybe his nature or his plan or is there something that there's a question mark over your head as to um, God, why this or how the other? Or even, Lord, what's your will for my life? What is Grace's biggest pursuit um, dynamic right now in Grace's life? Um, the All the chaos that's happening right now across our nation and like the, the division and, and hatred I can't wrap my head around it. And I'm just like, wait, why is this happening? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, like, and I don't have the answers. Like I, like, you know, no, no one does, you know, yeah. it's, but I just, even though I'm trying to grapple with it, I know that it's all part of God's plan or there's just like a reason. And he's also using people mm -hmm. um, for his purpose. And um, right now that's the biggest, I guess, issue in yeah. my life where I want to be one of those yeah. people yeah. <laughs> and I don't know how. Yeah. Um, and I, I feel that I'm not worthy of being used by God, but I pray that every morning that somehow. <laughs> hey, can I encourage you? <laughs> None of us are worthy to be used by God. Mm. That's the amazing thing. Yeah. Scripture says in the book of Romans, it's the goodness of God mm -hmm. that leads a man to repentance. Mm -hmm. And that carries with it that remarkable thing is, God, who am I? Why? Who? What? And none of us are worthy yeah. to handle such things. Yeah. So that's awesome. Um, if you could, if you could have, I, I always put it this way, if you could rub a Christian lamp <laughs> and have this, <laughs> This perfect will be done for your life. Um, Psalm 37, 4 says, Delight yourself in the Lord, mm -hmm. and he will grant or bestow upon you the desires of your heart. It's quite a powerful scripture because people only hear the latter end of the verse. Oh my goodness, he's going to give me the desires of my heart? Well, there's, is, there's a prerequisite. Mm -hmm. It's delight yourself in the Lord. Mm -hmm. And when I hear your testimony, I'm hearing that grace is del delighting herself in the Lord. So let's take that verse and you fill in the, the blank. Let's, you can dream right now. Mm -hmm. right? As you walk with God and as you journey with God, you're delighting yourself in the Lord. That's because grace is saying, I want, I want to know what you want me to do, God. And I want to know more of your word. And I want to, I want to tell people. 
Um, my heart is hurt by the confusion that's out there and by the violence and by the ugliness. People need to know the answer. You're mm -hmm. delighting yourself in him. Mm -hmm. So then what is the desire of your heart as Grace Cho grows up and lives this life until Christ returns? If you could rub a Christian lamp, what would come out regarding your life? I don't know like how all the one and only thing I'm certain of is that um, I don't want to be silent anymore. And um, I just want to proclaim wow. the truth of Christ so that um, that God just uses me as a vessel to bring people into his kingdom. Um, I don't know how that's going to happen, but that's just no, all I want. No, of course not. <laughs> and that's, that's part of the walk. But yeah. you see, look, you just articulated... You're, look at this. You're, because you've been pursuing God, your desire, your desire that's in you mm -hmm. is in 100% correlation and agreement with the Word of God. You are actually proof positive that Psalm 37.4 is being active and answered in your life. Mm -hmm. Because you could have said, and it's nothing wrong, you could have said, I want to love God with all my heart and I want to be uh, the best artist or piano player in the world. Hey, that's fine. God bless you. Your answer was, I want to tell people, I want to be used more. I want to make an impact. So God, Grace, God has a ministry for you planned. He actually knows it. He's holding it. Mm -hmm. He's known it forever. And you're going to be discovering that. So the cool thing about it is as you seek him, he's going to open it up more and more. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be there. And again, as Ephesians says, it's been there from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And uh, Titus tells us also that, and, and Philippians, that these are plans that God has before the foundations of the world were ever laid mm -hmm. for us. So um, I'm absolutely blown away and uh, encouraged. And I know that you're back at church, and I know that we are um, meeting full mm -hmm. bore as a church goes, but there's other ministries that we need to bring back online that have been uh, our history, mm -hmm. and we're working on that. But you probably don't know about a ministry that um, you might want to look into. And that ministry is entitled uh, The Call. That's the name of it, The Call. Mm -hmm. And when you hear about it, you ought to pray about it. And you ought to find out about it because The Call Ministry equips you. Every, every believer who takes the course equips you on how to share Jesus, the gospel, mm -hmm fully and, and quite frankly, theologically exact. And it empowers you. It gives you strength. You may find that that's one of the next steps for you is to find out how can I be galvanized mm -hmm. with truth and to share the gospel with someone in five minutes at an airport or an elevator or whatever and know that I gave the gospel, the pure, unadulterated gospel. And that's mm -hmm. a ministry, again, that's coming online here, coming back online. But um, those kinds of things, as you present yourself open to what God wants to do, mm -hmm. and, and, there's no telling what he's going to do with your life. I, I wish I could bottle you with what I heard today and just dispense that in people's lives because your message needs to be heard and what God's doing in your life needs to be replicated. And you're right, I agree. Revival is coming and you are, and you rightfully have described revival because you have known, you have known the Lord, you've known of the Lord, and you're experiencing a revival in your life. Revival applies only to those who are of faith. People forget this. Mm -hmm. Revival, revive, vive is life. Revive is to bring back life. Right. You had it, you got away from it, mm -hmm. and now you got it. The world is lost. They cannot be revived. They can only be saved. But you said something so wise, and I agree. Revival will awaken the church. Okay, mm -hmm. The church will become so attractive to the lost world that is searching that the lost they have somewhere to go mm -hmm. to find salvation. Mm -hmm. And you are living that. You are being that in small, what God wants to do in mass with, with the entire church itself. So um, I'm curious, what would you say 
to someone that is, has uh, has your generation and uh, before them and has somewhat of an experience before them, what would you say? Because a lot of kids today, are, they they were given the gospel, mm -hmm. they went to college, they view now mom and dad as a bunch of clowns, and um, that they didn't know what they were doing. I'm not talking about the level and the quality of parenting. I'm talking about kids who have heard the gospel growing up. What, what would you say to them right now? What what would you tell them regarding their upbringing, their family, their church, their past in the gospel setting? Um, I would say that having known the Lord walking away from him created the most pain I had ever felt in my life. Um, even when I thought I had everything I wanted, like, you know, a well-paying career, like a good relationship, just I had what society might have looked at as successful. Yeah. And even with with all of that, I felt this void. Um, something that could never be filled by anything else. Um, turning to God and letting Him in and giving, giving your life up to Him um, has brought me so much freedom. Um, and a joy that nothing else in life has been able to give me. Mm -hmm. um, and so I would say, um, I would say just jump into turning back to the yeah. Lord and, um, and give that a shot and God yeah. will do the work in your life to yeah. show you that. Um, yep. That's the only way to be. That's awesome. That's so the scripture declares that he who has begun a good work in you mm -hmm. will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. And so Amen. I tell you, I'm excited to see what it's going to be. I look forward to talking to you more. I want you to make sure that you come up to me in the foyer mm -hmm. or in the courtyard. And I want to be watching now. And I want to, as this church does, we want to play a role in, in bringing to you or letting you know of opportunities because you have this passion. So in my mind, mm -hmm. okay, in my mind, <laughs> I'm listening to you and I'm thinking, man, I want her to meet uh, so-and-so. This guy's a, a business creator. This guy started with nothing and has all of this now, this empire he's built. But then I want her to meet a, a couple of uh, congresswomen we know. I want her to meet maybe the senator. I'd love for her to meet. Because my mind, as you were talking, my mind is going and, and uh, with your generation and with, with your story, one of the things is, oh man, I want to introduce her to our friends at Prager University. And there's just so much because that. God is on you. Mm -hmm. It is so obvious that God's hand is on you. Mm -hmm. I'm delighted and excited to see what that's going to look like. And we as a church, this is what we delight in. We've got young people now all over this world that this church from an early age has assisted them and helped them and now are connected with them in various places. And we wanna make sure that happens to you. We don't want you to miss out on a thing because God's got an amazing plan for you. Amen. So Grace, it was awesome being with <laughs> you. God bless you. you. Look forward to seeing Thank more you. of you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you.